Hey everybody. In this session, we're going to talk through how to use Nigel, not in terms of like all of its different features, but basically a short walkthrough of the different ways to invoke Nigel, the ways to get information to and from Nigel, and maybe some of the limitations that you might run into as well. So hopefully this will get you there in a short period of time. Let's dive in. All right, so once you have LabVIEW open, normally, you know, if you just wanted to open up Nigel, one of the ways that you can get to do that is you should be able to, from the AI advisor, from within the tools menu itself. And also you can see that there is indeed a hotkey to go to control, shift, and N. Presuming that you've done that, we're gonna go ahead and see what we get. So once Nigel loads, if you already have a login and if you've already gone through this process, you'll see that uh, it will automatically log in for you. But if you haven't, go ahead and click on login. It will go ahead and give you your ni.com login information and you should be able to log in. Now, one thing worth noting about Nigel is that it does require an active subscription to LabVIEW or a standard service plan commonly referred to as an SSP for LabVIEW Professional. Both of those two options will get you access to Nigel. If you have any questions about that, be sure to talk to whoever gets you your LabVIEW licenses. So one of the unique things about Nigel is that it is custom tuned on top of already existing kind of chatbots that are out there to understand what you're going to do when it comes down to using NI equipment and NI software and actually just stuff in the world of test and measurement. So to start off, I'm going to actually pull something with is comparing the 6009 to the 6453 just as a, a text prompt into Nigel and to try to see what it says. Now, when I press, I think it's control enter, we'll actually go through and commit your uh, message. So that's a, uh, a micro interaction to recognize is once you type in, go ahead and press control enter that will send the command across. Now, just yesterday, if I can go ahead and open this up, you'll see that when I ask this exact same question to chat GPT in a parallel window, you can compare the different types of responses that came back. Clearly, one is more understanding that you're a test engineer likely working with something NI, and the other one is thinking maybe you're working with Sherman Williams paint colors. Uh, just once again, a, uh, a marked difference where you can still get a lot of value, obviously, out of all these general purpose chatbots, but when you deal with one that is made for the engineering job at hand, you're going to get your answer as you need it with less prompting and less time and information. Another example that I went through in this one was uh, kind of how do I offset my strain gauge? Let's go ahead and copy and paste that, press that control enter again, and it will get, uh, it'll start chewing on it. And it'll start to ask about once again, a just a generic piece of information. Now this request of offsetting a strain gauge could mean anything in a variety of different domains. And uh, once again, we're gonna get something more specific. Now, while we wait for it, let's go ahead and scan through some of the results that we got before about the comparison. So it's automatically making tables specific to the hardware that we talked about. It figured out one was a, a USB module and the other one was a, well, they're both, looks like they're both USB modules in this case. And we can kind of scroll through and some of the things that are coming out is basically the ability to uh, see the pinouts of the things that you've asked for. That's really nice. It's got links directly to the specifications of what you're looking for. And then of course it's uh, asking, uh, it's giving you some guidance of how to think about some of those uh, different devices that you can see there. All right, so now that we're looking at it here and we can kind of see this other question of uh, a strain gauge, once again, it is specific about test and measurement. It not only talks about the concept, but it also says, hey, if you're using NI equipment, here's the software and hardware and other ways to go ahead and start to use it as well. Once again, a big time saver overall. Uh, we've got steps, and so we've now got the ability to show how to do it in FlexLogger and uh, guidance from above and beyond that point. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a thumbs up right now, say factually correct and informative. Let's go ahead and submit that information as well. So once you close Nigel, uh, it technically still has services running in the background. And so if you just press that control shift N again, it should go ahead and launch Nigel back into that window with the same context of what we were just looking at a moment ago. And so it does keep that log for the instance of LabVIEW as long as you have it open. Now, in this case, we had to scroll to the bottom. That's not so bad, but that's also another feature of working with uh, Nigel that you can try to take advantage of. Some other micro interactions that are worth noting, depending on how much information is there, it is effectively a web page, so you should be able to kind of control scroom, control scroll, kind of to zoom in and out for specific pieces of information. And something else that's nice too is your ability to just go ahead and copy the text from this. So let's see what we get. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and I'm going to get and open up. Let's just open up Word to see what happens uh, when I give it kind of a rich text place to land. 
So now I've got Word open, and let's go ahead and do a paste. And you can see that it did indeed copy the text. It did indeed copy the links, but it didn't copy the images. And that's okay. That indeed can get you quite a bit. Now, for things that do have tables, I think it tries to preserve a bit of a table nature to it, but it is giving you more of the information that you had just a moment ago uh, regarding what you were just looking at within the Nigel existence. So once again, different ways of engaging with Nigel. The context stays relevant. It stays open. You don't lose anything from instance to instance. Of course, at the moment, there is no ability to kind of scroll through your history associated with that. But that's just one of these things that you should be looking for in future versions as we continue to enhance not only its responses by updating the back end in the web, but then also with our quarterly releases, what you actually see on the desktop experience. All right, so now we've asked two generic questions of Nigel, but one of the kind of the keystone or capstone things that we know Nigel has that ability to do is to talk about a specific VI. Now, the way that you get Nigel to understand a specific VI is either through context help, you have the ability to click on that uh, discuss with Nigel button right there, really kind of anytime you see those two chat bubbles that's implying Nigel. So if we go ahead and click on discuss with Nigel in just a moment, we'll see that VI get transferred into Nigel and then it starts to chew on that information. Now, one of the things that you may have noted up here in the upper right-hand corner is it's actually giving you an indication of how many different VIs you can discuss with Nigel. Currently, there's a limit for 20 per day, which is something that we've set because we believe that it's uh, an appropriate number and we don't know where the usage is going to be. So if you find that this number is more than adequate, great, let us know. And if you find that it's nowhere near enough, also, please let us know. We're trying to custom tune the experience and the back end and the features, once again, to meet what you're looking for. So now that we've got some information back, let's talk about some of the things that we're seeing here uh, that it has given back to us. So usually it, uh, Nigel will come back with a bit of a summary of the VI. Uh, and, it's some, and one of the things to note is that it is not just reading the controls and indicators and labels that you already have on the VI, it's actually thinking about what mathematical operations are happening in this. And I've seen that time and time again. So that's really helpful. So what is it? What are the ins and outs? How does it work? And it usually goes through a multi-step process describing that kind of gives a, a bit of a summary table. And then lastly, uh, some other summary information. Now, in this case, it's actually very interesting. It's figured out that it's calculating pi and that there's different specific asks associated with it. And that really is something that you can continue through with these conversations with Nigel. Because don't forget, it's not just a chatbot made to only understand NI things. It's built on top of already existing uh, uh, like chatbots that are out there in the world. I think in particular, OpenAI, OpenAI's model. So another thing to note in terms of how to get to the AI advisor is not only through the shortcut, not only through the discuss with Nigel, but you, if you wanted to invoke Nigel, let's just go ahead and close it right there. You can bring Nigel to the front by simply clicking on the Nigel button that you can see in terms of uh, on the Nigel AI advisor button right there. Or you also have the ability to search within Nigel for something. So if I just typed in tuple, as if, so let's say I'm a Python programmer trying to understand where that exists within LabVIEW. So I typed it in, got to hit enter. I keep forgetting that one. And you can see it's starting to search both the palettes for things that might match and also examples to help you understand those things. And so you can see some of the first things that came back or were an appropriate finding trying to talk about the ability to bundle, which is the a cluster and a cluster and a tuple are kind of synonymous within those two different languages. And the other thing that came up afterwards is that we also have some very specific uh, examples that you can see that are also associated with that. And you can see it pulled some Python ones that are available and then some other ones that are associated with clusters and sets and maps, interestingly enough. Now, the other thing that's kind of interesting about this is if you were to hover over any of those, you can see through a tip strip why it's going through and justifying using that to answer the question with regards to tuples. Okay, lastly, as a kind of a usability feature in terms of what we have in there, if you just simply put a, I believe that's a slash and put clear, you will see that Nigel and the chatbot session will clear its overall uh, session that's available to you, kind of getting you back to a base level. Okay, so that brings us to the close for this session, talking about different ways to instantiate Nigel, to talk with Nigel, to get data into and out of Nigel within the context of being a LabVIEW programmer. So once again, it is a chatbot built on top of already existing chatbots to tune to the software and hardware that you're likely to be using, and we're looking for your feedback. 
leave some feedback in the comments below. Let us know what you're looking for, what you're not looking for. We know that generative AI so that you can generate code from the chatbot isn't currently in place. And we know that that's something that's going to be a big demand now that Nigel's out in the open and we're going to continue to invest and continue to push forward the boundaries of what's capable in this environment so that you can accelerate your development and get to your answers faster using LabVIEW, using Nigel and with an eye. Thanks.